Well, I'm going to begin by asking, I mean, this is, of course, based on a slight trick of the mind by Mitch Cullen. And I was wondering, had you read that and, and how vital and important do you think it is to, to read the source material? Or can, can it be really helpful in crafting a character or can it sometimes be overbearing and give you almost too much to work with? Well, you, you're spot on that. I mean, uh, I've, I've, I've played a lot of real people. Uh, and the first was um, uh, Lawrence of Arabia uh, on television, uh, a play. And I did a lot of research. I, I read about the real Lawrence of Arabia and discovered there were all sorts of things that the playwright hadn't put into his script. Well, it's too late for me to come up with ideas. You know, that someone has puzzled over the, the way he wants to tell the story and, and, and the actors arrive at the last minute, really, to, to bring it to life. And ever since, I've not done any research at all in, in, into if I'm playing a real person. Now, if you're playing Hamlet, you might want to delve into psychoanalysis and uh, the inner behaviour of, of troubled young men uh, as, as a, some sort of background material. And for Sherlock Holmes, if you're playing him, you might want to read up on some of the novels or look at other people playing Sherlock Holmes. In fact, I didn't do that on the grounds that the script was self-explanatory, uh, it was perfectly clear what it was all about. Uh, I had, a, of course, a pretty good impression of, of uh, what Sherlock Holmes is like, and uh, the, the joke in this film, the, the, the catch, is, is that uh, the real Sherlock Holmes, actually, it wasn't much like the Sherlock Holmes that Dr. Watson wrote about. Mm. No deer stalker, no pipe, only a glimpse of a magnifying glass. But um, research has got its limits. I mean, there have been some sort of very noteworthy sort of reinterpretations of oh, Sherlock of yes, late, of course. Of course. Um, Benedict Cumberbatch, Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. Uh, um, do you think that even just there were any certain distinct kind of sensibilities that may have just subconsciously creeped into how you perceive him and therefore portray <coughs> him now? I think of I think of Sherlock Holmes as being thin, don't you, and tall and and, and aquiline and angular, and perhaps the neck leaning forward and. Hearing, but it would be no use me sitting through Benedict's uh, wonderful series or, or, or Robert Downey's because that was nothing to do with the script that we've got. So, although I was playing a character that I think a hundred actors have played Sherlock Holmes, amazing, uh, over the years, uh, I was playing a very particular Mr. Holmes, uh, and certainly the oldest. So I took comfort from that. But basically, the script was, was good enough. I, I, one bit of research I might do, if, if, if a script is based on a novel, is to go back and read the novel. Because sometimes there are things in there which are glancingly important. Oh. I was just wondering, I mean, nostalgia is a really key theme in this movie. I was wondering if you're quite a, a nostalgic person. Do you often look back, or are you very much about the here and now? Well, I've just been asked to write my memoirs, so I, I've spent a lot of time looking back. And it's a rum business, because you suddenly find yourself flooded with tears over some event you'd totally forgotten about. Yeah. And, and little things come back to your mind, you know, suddenly, oh, it was a sunny day that day, you know, things that, how, how do you remember that? But on the whole, I'm aware of the past, I'm, I'm, aware, I'm aware of where I've come from and where I've been, although at 76 you forget a lot, and so there's an awful lot I have forgotten. But the trick, I think, is to live in the present and look forward to the future. The past, I mean, what can you do about the past? Just make sure you don't repeat your mistakes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 76 as of yesterday. Happy yeah. birthday. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I was to, of course, Sherlock takes up beekeeping, of course, in, when he's retired. I was wondering, if you were to, to retire from acting, what hobby, or do you think there's any hobbies you could, you could see yourself taking up or getting involved in? Cooking. Mm. A very useful hobby, cooking. What's your Obviously. best dish? Uh, Sea bass on rosti. Ooh. Do you know what rosti is? Yeah. Yes. Potato crisps. Or, yeah. And I've only just learned to do this dish because Simon Rimmer was given to me as, as a present. He's a, do you know him? A wonderful yeah. chef on TV a lot. And he, was, he came round to my house and I had a whole day being taught how to cook by him. That was a present from all my friends. <laughs> Bliss. So sea bass and rosti is my favourite dish of the moment. <laughs> I was wondering, I mean, <laughs> back to Sherlock. I mean, what, what do you think it is about this character that's so perennial and, and allows him to be loved around the world and across 
so many generations. He's just he's one of the most kind of mm. renowned fictional creations mm. ever, really. Mm. Well, there are other famous and popular detectives, of course. Uh, Monsieur Poirot and uh, Miss Marple. Uh, and uh, many, many others, Maigret. There's something about the, the, the man who, against all the odds, uh, comes up with the right answer and solves the puzzle. But why Sherlock Holmes in particular? I think perhaps because he was the first of them in, in literature uh, to popularise detection. He was also, of course, um, often at odds with the police. The police were made to look foolish. I'm afraid, much as we depend on the police, it, it, it is rather nice at times to put them in their place in yes. that sense. <laughs> so Sherlock, uh, Sherlock's wit was uh, and superiority was an attractive thing, although you wouldn't like it, it did, sent in your direction. I don't think he'd be a very comfortable man to spend an evening no. with Sherlock Holmes. He'd be talking about himself all the time, probably. <laughs> and I think London, maybe. Uh, it, you know, the end of the 19th century London is... Uh, 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 a rather romantic period we think of. So maybe that too. And it's a very, very good part. And a lot of very, very good actors uh, have played him very, very well. So I think that's helped uh, Sherlock Holmes' uh, reputation. I just wondering very quickly, of course, you're rumoured to be involved in the Noel Coward, forthcoming Noel Coward by Pick. I was just wondering oh, yes. if that's oh. the case, and if so, who are you supposed to be playing? Uh, it, it's a film uh, by Martin Sherman uh, about uh, Noel Coward as a young man. Uh, and I shall play Charles Hawtrey, who was a successful actor who taught um, the young Noel how to laugh, to fake a laugh, yeah. and, and other things too. <laughs> so, yeah. I think Vanessa Redgrave is going to be in it as well. Mm. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and then before that, I've got um, a play called The Dresser, uh, which we've revived for uh, BBC t TV with Anthony Hopkins and me. I'm gradually working my way through the nights. Yeah. You know, uh, Patrick Stewart, I did some with uh, Tony Sher on The Hobbit, uh, Derek Jacobi and Vicious, and now uh, Anthony Hopkins. I think I've only got Gambon left now. Yeah. Work with. <laughs> well, I look forward to that happening. Thank okay. you so much for your time All today. Right, much nice appreciated. You. Thank you. Bye bye. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!